everyone, it's Carrie back with you today. I've been making these decorative photo frames and I'm going to show you how I've created them today. I've used a few items from our shop and I will link those below, but please know that you don't need to use exactly the same items that I'm using. You can use items that you most likely already have in your craft room, like standard cardstock and images that you can get from books or magazines. Sometimes you can even find freebies on the internet from digital artists. This one's from Artie Mays with a Halloween theme. So I'll show you how I've created them and then you can adapt it to whatever you've got to hand. Let's begin. So to begin with I've got my card front and back here. Now if you're using items that you already have at home you just need a piece of cardstock with some kind of aperture in it. You can make it a fancy one or it could just be a circle or a square or a rectangle or whatever you like and some kind of backing that is the same size as the front. So I'm going to start applying some ink to my card. Now my um, Distress Oxide in this walnut colour is very dried out. So I'm going to apply this directly to my card. If your ink pad is very juicy, you probably don't want to start with this. Um, you could just use a foam blending tool or a stencil brush or something like that to start getting the ink down. But because my ink is so uh, dry, I'm just going straight from the ink pad onto my card. So I've got a little bit of brown down there now and I'm going to go in again straight from the ink pad on top with my rusty hinge. Now this one's um, quite a bit more juicy so rather than rub it I'm just patting down a little bit here and there. I want to get a sort of a rusty looking background. Alright so I'm happy with that and I'm just going to take a um, baby wipe. Now this is straight out of the packet so it's slightly damp but not you know not really wet. I'm just going to gently rub on top of my card here to start my colours blending a little bit. Now it doesn't matter if they don't blend particularly well because you sort of you want that distressed worn rusty look. If you want a really nice smooth finish then you'll be better off blending this out with a um, blending brush or a blending foam. Alright so I've got some good background colour there now. I want to come in with a, a bit of highlight colours so I'm going to use peeled paint because this will give me a, a bit of a patinaed look and I want to pop it on in, a, in three areas so I'll put a little bit over there maybe a little bit more down here and a little bit over here and then I'm going to do the same with the Uncharted Mariner. Now this stamp pad is extremely juicy so I'm going to tap a little bit off first and then again I want to go in sort of in, in about three areas. Now it doesn't matter if that doesn't look very well blended by the time we've got the rest of the colouring done it, it'll add to the effect if it's sort of looking a little bit distressed. I'm just going to give that a quick blast with the heat gun to dry that off a little bit. And then I'm just going to go back in with that um, walnut stain just to darken it up in a couple of areas. Alright, so I'll just pop that out of the way. So next I want to come in with my foam blending tool. And I'm going to use archival ink because this won't react with water. And the reason I want my foam tool here is because I've got this bit of engraving down the bottom here and I don't want to use my stencil brush because that'll go into the engraving and cover it with ink and I want to leave that sort of light. Once I start going over it with the darker ink you'll see it will sort of pop out and be a lot more obvious. And then I'm going to just go around the frame with my black archival ink just sort of highlighting the edges and darkening up the, the whole overall thing really. So now I've sort of got this darkness going on on the frame, I'm going to flick a little bit of water over the top of that which will react with the oxide ink but not the archival ink and that will give me sort of that more uh, vintagey aged look. And I'll just 
dab that ink off with a bit of paper towel and then I'll just give that a bit of a dry. So now you can see that sort of distressed look from the water on those inks there. And the next thing I want to do is add some gold splashes on top of my frame. So I've just mixed up some Lindy's Glittering Gold Magical in my little um, palette here. And I'm just going to pick that up with a small paintbrush and I'm just going to flick it onto the background. And if you find your splatters always sort of go the same way because you're flicking from the same direction, just turn your work around and flick from the other side and then it won't look like they're all going in the same direction. And I'm just going to dry that off again. All right, so I've got my frame here now with the gold splashes and I've brought in an image. This is from our vintage wrapping paper and I'm just going to lay it over the top, lay my frame over the top of this image and work out roughly where I want to have her sitting in my frame. And then I'm just going to take a pen and mark on the edges of this paper where I need to cut. Now it's already um, behind the edge of the frame on this side so I don't need to cut anything there. And when I'm cutting I need to come in a couple of millimetres from my mark. I might just take a little bit off that side. So now I'm going to pop just a little bit of uh, glue stick glue onto the back of my cabinet card or photo frame and I'm just going to pop a little bit on, on each side just so I can position the picture pretty easily. Lay my picture down and pop that over and then turn it over and make sure everything fits within the edges. So you can see at the top here I'm hanging over the edge just a little bit. So I can go in with my scissors and just take off a little bit more. Okay, so once that's done, it's time to add the back. So you can leave it plain, you could cover it with coffee dyed paper. On some of these ones I've used a brown card instead. And I'm just going to apply some glue stick over the whole back. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of art glitter glue just around the very edges. Doing this allows me to um, have a couple of seconds to manoeuvre the cards on top of each other without the glue sticking straight away. If I used just the art glitter glue by itself it would grab too quickly. So then I'm just going to pop the cards together and then use the corners to make sure that they are on top of each other. Swipe a little bit of excess glue off there. So you could leave it like that if you wanted to or you could go ahead and add some more decoration like I have on this one. So for this one I've been using some lovely um, hand dyed uh, cotton that I made a couple of weeks ago. I've been a little bit obsessed with it, using it in everything as you do with something new. So I've just taken a piece and um, gathered it up messily and ran it through the sewing machine and I'm just going to stick that down here using some hot glue. Just be careful not to burn yourself. I've got this, I think this is actually a clay modelling tool but it's got like a skinny little um, rubber or silicon end on the of it on sorry it's got a little silicon spatula type end and I find it really good for 
uh, using the hot glue because it lets me push down and I don't burn my fingers. So now I want to make a little tab here and I've picked a matching piece of the dyed cotton and I'm just going to snip a small piece and then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just run a row of stitching uh, about a centimetre or half a centimetre in from the edge along here. So I've got my little stitched tab there. I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. And then I'm going to fray the edges as well. I'm just going to attach it with a little bit of hot glue. I'm pressing it down with my little silicon spatula thingy. I'm going to add a little black number label here. out there and then I want to add a little butterfly on here as well. I've just got a little scrap of black lace here which I'm going to lay over the top of my um, dyed fabric. Just flatten that down a little bit and then I'm just going to ink this butterfly and I'm going to use my scissors just to shape his wings a little bit. Yep, I think that'll be all right. So I'll just pop a little bit of glue onto the butterfly first and then adhere that onto the lace but I'm not pushing down and then I'll pick up the lace and pop a little bit more glue onto the back of the lace. Pop that down on top and I'm just going to press down with my handle of my silicon brush in the middle of the butterfly. So that helps really adhere it down but it also helps his wings pop up a little bit as well. So there we go. So this would make a great embellishment to pop onto the front of a journal or you could clip it into your journal. If you didn't have such a um, dimensional embellishment on the front, you could actually also just slide it into a pocket and then they would have journaling space on the back. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I will leave links in the description box below to the items that I've used today, but as I said earlier, you can use anything that you've got in your craft room. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you again next time. Bye!